I'm building the ultimate budget home lab and today we are leveling up my PowerEdge T430 once again. Welcome back to the channel. I'm David with Dealier Tech and this is another video on the upgrades to my home lab. Specifically today, we're working on the PowerEdge T430, which has already seen a few really big upgrades. We added an NVIDIA Quattro 4000 graphics card. We added 256 gigs of DDR4 ECC RAM, as well as a 10 gigabytes per second network interface card and an upgraded RAID controller. We added a 16 terabyte hard drive and this has become the highest performing server that I own. I also have a PowerEdge R720XD, a PowerEdge T420 that I got for 35 bucks, and some other hardware like an Optiplex mini PC, an old Alienware that's running as my pie hole. So the home lab's growing and the upgrades are a flowing. I've been hounding eBay for weeks now looking for deals on the upgrades that we're going to be slapping in today which is another four sticks of 32 gig RAM, bringing us to a total of 384 gigabytes of RAM in this machine. And we are adding two new Xeon processors, the best CPUs that can be installed into the PowerEdge T430. Those are the upgrades that we have in store today. Let's jump in. On the operating table, we have four sticks of 32 gig DDR4 RAM and our matched set of Intel Xeon CPUs. And we will unbox our CPUs in a sec and I'll show you what we're working with. With the cover off, we can see the internals of the PowerEdge T430 the RTX 4000 graphics card, our upgraded network interface card, as well as our RAID controller. We see there's four open RAM slots, which will soon be all filled with 32 gig sticks. And then our heat sinks, which are currently covering the existing processors and will soon be upgraded with these bad boys. First things first, we will put on our strap, okay. We've got that on. First, we will go ahead and install the RAM. So let me take out our RAM sticks. And here is a little close up of our RAM. Hopefully that has focused right. Okay, let's go ahead and fill up all of the remaining RAM slots. And just like that, we have successfully installed 32 gig sticks of RAM into all 12 of the open slots on my T430, bringing us to 384 gigabytes of RAM in this beautiful machine. Next up, CPU reveal. Before we reveal what's inside of our bubble wrap for our new CPUs, let's just quickly talk about the current CPUs inside of the T430. We have a matched pair of Xenon E5 2683v4s. Uh, the, each of those has 16 cores, 32 threads, so a total of 32 cores and 64 threads right now, with a base clock speed of 2.1 gigahertz and a max turbo frequency of 3.0 gigahertz. So right now, the current CPUs are pretty dang good but they could be better. What's better? This is better. <laughs> Inside of here, we have dun, 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 dun. Well, apparently we have <laughs> even more wrapping paper. So I'm not too sure about this wrap job. It, I think they 
They definitely used a lot of material, but I've seen better packaging. Anyway, these are a matched set of Xenon E5 2699 V4s. That means we have two CPUs that have a total of 44 cores and 88 threads with, with a base clock speed of 2.2 gigahertz and a max turbo frequency of 3.6 gigahertz. So you can tell there are some really big gains involved with our performance once we upgrade to the matched pair of Xenon E5 2699 V4s, which are in my hands right now. Let's go ahead and remove the heat sinks, clean up the old thermal paste, and get these bad boys installed. I'm using my thicker screwdriver today. I'm not going to attempt the iFixit screwdriver because I just don't think it has the girth <laughs> to deal with these screws. So let's see. Yep. That one start that one started to unscrew pretty easily. Ugh. This one. This one not so much. This one's hard. It scares me a little bit. Yeah, so these are all making me a bit nervous. I've been working on these heat sinks for a couple minutes now, and on both heat sinks there's one screw that is just too tight and it won't come loose so i'm going to try some pliers to hopefully bust that tight connection one hour later oh yeah one down one to go We'll go ahead and remove these and get ready to do some cleaning. We have successfully removed both existing CPUs. So let's go ahead and clean these off. Clean off our heat sinks and then install the new processors, then close everything back up. We can see here the existing processor, the one we just removed, is the Intel Xeon E5-2683 V4. Next up, we clean off the butt end of the heatsink. Heatsink 1, looking clean. Heatsink 2, nice and clean. Let's unveil the new processors. Very carefully. Intel Xeon E5-2699 V4. And then the back shot. Kapow! <laughs> and voila. CPU number two. Time to slap these bad boys inside. Starting with CPU 1. We remember to always match the gold triangle on the CPU with the white triangle on the case. We set the CPU in nice and gently. Got the first one locked in. Let's go for number two.
We have clamped down both of our new CPUs. Time to throw on some thermal paste and then reinstall the heat sinks. This heat sink is going back on a lot easier than it came off. <laughs> With the heat sinks screwed back on, it's time to put the covers back on and then power up the T430. With any luck, we didn't bend any pins and we'll fire back up just like we were before, except a whole lot more powerful. Let's see what happens. The next day. Oh man, our mission to max out the Power Edge T430 is well, it's hit a snag. Um, unfortunately, when I went to boot up and power on my server after upgrading the CPUs and adding the RAM, it would turn on, but the server wouldn't boot to BIOS. It wouldn't even post, and so it was basically dead in the water. So, of course, at first I got really really nervous. I was like, oh gosh, I messed up the install. I bent a pin on one of the CPUs. So I started to diagnose that. I didn't film any of that because it was really late at night and I was just pissed off. <laughs> but I basically started to take everything apart and I saw that, hey, everything was looking good. There wasn't any noticeable damage. Uh, removed the RAM that I installed. That's why you can see like RAM on the table. And was able to confirm that I can run one of the CPUs, um, but I can't run both of them. And I started to do more research on the issue because this family of processor uh, is compatible with the PowerEdge T430. So I started to look at some old Dell server posts and I saw people with the same issue as me. So went down that rabbit hole. Then I made my own post on Reddit today and was able to sort of get confirmation. Um, I also found a diagram which really points out the issue, um, the compatibility issue for this specific CPU for the E5 2699V4. Um, it's the the top of the top in that family, the, you know, most cores, like 22 cores, it's a beast of a CPU, but it also has a 145 watt TDP thermal design power rating. I could be butchering that, um, but it's TDP. And the max for the PowerEdge T430, I believe is 135 TDP. So that means that I can't have two of these CPUs in my T430. Now there could be a way around it because I have seen T430s for sale with these dual CPUs. That's the reason I bought these things was because I've seen them in other machines, but I'm not sure what the workaround is, or maybe if maybe it's just certain models with certain motherboards. I don't know that answer yet, but what I do know is as far as my capacity goes, I can't get these processors to work. So I think that that could maybe be some good advice for you. If you have a T430 server, maybe don't go with the E52699s. Um, I know that the CPU below that, I think it's the, 20, the E52698 V4 perhaps, that should work. It's um, TDP rating is 135. So you could use those, but don't get the E52699 V4s because you might run into the same problem that I'm experiencing and, and others have had as well. So I do plan to hold on to these CPUs. Uh, I don't think I'll list them on eBay for the time being. Maybe I'll figure out how to get them installed later on. Maybe there's some workarounds I can figure out. Maybe I can upgrade my power supply or my fans. I don't know yet but I will hold on to them. Maybe I'll get to throw them in a new machine later on too, so you never know. 
That being said, I do need to go ahead and put these processors back in, these older CPUs back in my T430, and then I'm going to put in all of the RAM that I removed during the troubleshooting process. So basically, we're not going to be exactly back from where we started yesterday. We will have 384 gigs of DDR4 RAM installed, and the processors that were in there before that are going back in are, are still pretty decent too. You know, they'll they'll be fine. Um, I'll still be able to use my server for everything I have been using it for, and also um, some of the new stuff I have coming up that I'm really excited to show you guys later on. Time to put the old CPUs back on. We have our old CPUs back installed as well as 384 gigs of DDR4 RAM. So ultimately I'd say things were a success. Time to close everything up and pray to God that we get a nice easy boot to Proxmox again. We're going to wrap up today's video in the Proxmox web interface for my T430. Here we can see that the E5-2683 CPUs are back installed, but also that only 314 gigs of RAM are shown. It should be 384 gigs of RAM, so I do have an issue there. I'll troubleshoot it this week, and hopefully I don't need to replace anything. On a final note, I have the perfect project for the E5 2699v4 CPUs that we learned are not compatible with my T430. So stay tuned for a powerhouse build coming up. Like and subscribe because I have a lot more home lab content coming every week. Thanks for watching. Bye.